rookie mistakes. Let's get into it. So the day I actually come over to help me pack the stuff before I went on vacation, I just had like a really eerie vibe. Like I just had a gut feeling to not let this girl in my house. I don't know why. I just was like, okay, I don't think I want you over today. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of everything. So I texted her, I was like, you know, don't worry about coming over. And she was just like kind of persistent, like, uh, I please, I need some money type shit or whatever. I was just like, you know, no, it's okay. I got it taken care of. So later that night, like around 10 p.m., I'm packing up the orders. I hear footsteps by my front door and I hear like crying at my door. I'm like, okay, what the fuck going on? So I get up, I put my ear to the door. I hear little noises by the door. So I look at the people. I see two men masked up trying to break in my shit. So I go back to my room, call 911, I grab my musket tool and head it back towards the front door. The fact that she didn't just ball up in her room with her gun, you know, on the phone with police, that really saved her life. You feel me? The fact that she went towards the chaos and caught them right as they came in, tagged them. The other ones had to dis disappear, you feel me? That's what saved her life. Instead of just sitting up, balling in the room, they would have came in and had their way with her. So I'm gonna call the police. I'm like, there's people trying to break into my house. Y'all better come quick because it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a motherfucking problem if they come in this house. So as I'm saying that on the phone to the police, I see a person in my porch looking through the window. And as he looking through the window, the first guy who was at the front door kicks in my door, and he got hit with that five. I blew him. Hmm. I hit him three times, twice in the chest, one in the chin. He took off running. He fired some shots back, but didn't hit none. The guy who was in the back ran to the front and got in the car as well. I'm looking at the car. I'm like, that is my assistant's car. You're telling me, hold on, man. You're telling me they did the, the robbery in the assistant's car? That's how thirsty they was for this? Come on, man. All right, I'm not going to interrupt you no more. Let's go ahead and finish it off. So 20 minutes later, the police finally shows up, and I told them, I was like, I got a camera in the living room, I got a ring camera, and I got a dash camera in my car because they parked the getaway car in front of my car. So I have all of the different angles of how these motherfuckers tried to come around me. So they were like, you need to go to the hospital because it was a blood trail. I was like, no, I didn't get hit. That's their blood. You need to be looking out for them because I definitely hit one of the guys three times. So boom, fast forward to the next day. She texted me again and was like, hey, Bree, I heard what happened. But mind you, I didn't tell nobody. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell my siblings. I didn't tell none of my homeboys in Atlanta. I didn't tell nobody what happened because I already knew what type of time she was on. So I didn't tell anybody what happened. She texted me and was like, I heard what happened. But I didn't respond because I was like, yo, okay. Like, I, I see I see what's going on. Say less. They dropped one of the guys off at the hospital. He ended up dying from the injuries. And then five days later, she got ping pinged up on a highway. And that case has not been solved yet. I was investigated for it, but I had nothing to do with that situation. I was in Thailand when it happened. Like I said, I went in Thailand for 30 days for my birthday. So I had nothing to do with that situation. So boom, those two died. And then a getaway driver ended up dying a couple months later at a gas station. So yeah, don't rob nobody. <laughs> quick thinking. Very quick thinking.